Hello and welcome everyone to the Seeking Heaven channel. Hope you're having a great day. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. So I want to tell you a couple announcements. We're going to jump right into it. But we're going to be having a unveiling Lumeria, which is going to be July 27th and 28th. And you can go to portal to ascension.com. We're going to talk about that. Um, uh, no, not dot com dot org. We're going to talk about more about that in a minute. And we're also going to be talking about the Galactic Origins cruise. So that's going to be coming up. So exciting things we're going to be talking about. So let me go ahead and talk about our guest today. Super excited all the way from Thailand. I can't believe it. This is, um, I mean, this is what's so wonderful about Portal to Ascension. It truly is a global community of our star family coming together. And today we have the founder and director of Portal to Ascension. And if you don't know about it, you're going to know about it soon because it is that, I tell you what, it is on, it is on the edge. It is popping the topics, the interview, they're edgy. It's awesome. I love it. And I just have so much deep respect and love for the founder, Neil Gar, who is also now the co-host of the Galactic Origins Cruise. And Neil, he is not only a fantastic organizer, as well as being able to really sense in people where their strengths are. And he has totally given me a chance to shine and really go deep with my topics and it's just like, I just feel so, you know, deeply appreciative and my soul just feels enhanced and yours will too. Uh, after you hear about him and we want you to join us on the crew. So he's going to talk about portal to Ascension and, and then we're going to, we're just going to deep dive this and have some fun. So Neil, welcome. Thank you, Tamara. Good to be here with you. Absolutely. And you're in Thailand. You're such a world traveler. Yeah, Philippines right now, but I'm staying in Thailand, living there oh, for a while. Mm -hmm. That's right. I can't keep up, but I love your videos. They're so they're so precious, and uh, I love the robot one. But uh -huh. I wanted, <laughs> and in the meantime, you still are keeping up with Portal to Ascension. Um, I want people to get a flavor. I know we've talked about this in the past about that you've had in person events, online events. You have what is it over? Uh, I mean a year isn't it like 700 events in a year i mean it's insane how many is that what is that number not 700 but more 60 to 70 up to 100 sometimes it fluctuates we've had some years where there's 100 right now we're around 60 to 70 that's like actual fully produced events that obviously we do um interviews we do all other test productions so including all of our productions i can't really keep count just it just probably goes up to a couple hundred but fully produced events, like 60 to 70. I mean, it, it's just amazing. And good quality. You have really good quality. And I like the fact that you take the chance on newbies. You see the talent and uh, there's a good collection of topics and speakers on Portal to Ascension. You've been working really hard on this website, uh, which is itself a portal. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, the new website. Is that what mm -hmm. you're talking about? It's beautiful. So I've been working on it for quite some time, four years. I've gone through many, many hurdles. Kind of almost took me to a point of wanting to give up, just like so much was put into it. And finally, we're at a point now where it's being launched. And uh, it's been launched. We have a few things that we're shifting on it. But basically, it's a new aesthetic platform for Portal to Ascension. Um, I really love the portal when you first get to the page. I was in ceremony last year, right? And um, and uh, in ceremony, I was, you know, thinking about portal to ascension and and what I my role is as the you know as the gatekeeper for por the portal. And in the ceremony, I had a vision of myself on Orion as the gatekeeper. I mean, this is a whole long story, but as the gatekeeper of the portal to descension. Okay, mm -hmm. and. So I'm on earth now creating the opposite, which is quite a literal portal through information, awareness, remembrance. And in that moment, it came to me to put a portal on the homepage to represent portal to ascension. And that portal is actually the portal from my vision on when I was on Orion as the gatekeeper. <clears throat> so so you, know, cool. you come in, you literally are entering a portal of like a one-stop shop for consciousness. The amount of content in there, I lost count at thousands of hours. So we have, and so with the new website, I really wanted to make sure that, you know, we have so much content. It just, it's, it's hard to browse through it. And 
with our attention spans this day, you need it to be really categorized properly. So the back end has um, specific categories. We have awakening consciousness, we have true world history, we have UFOs and ETs, we have health and wellness. And underneath each of them is like 10 to 15 more categories. For example, true world history, Egypt history, earth history, galactic history, Asia history. And there's, I think there's one more. And so we, you can go in there and there's a, a couple of thousand hours of free content. So you can just sign up, navigate and start browsing. And then we have our upcoming events. We have a register for replays. We have um, our links to our live productions because we're doing that as well. So just finally got to a point where I was able to showcase everything we're doing in a really efficient manner. And so not only do we have like the front end, which is you can sign up for these events and register for replays, but we also just have an archive of all our content in the back end as well. And so I'm really happy with it. We've got a few more tweaks left to go, and but we're almost there. Well, I love when you go to that first that portal page because I, I, you know, I'm obsessed with portals and nebulas. Mm -hmm. Just going to say, <laughs> I, I, I am. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why. It, actually, one of my near death experiences went to a nebula because I just had to look around. But the portal mm -hmm. when it goes bam and it splashes, it goes boom boom. I was like, oh, that's so exciting. So yeah, I right. love that. And but it truly is. And uh, how long have you? Uh, had Portal to Ascension, and when did this start? Because I know you started with live events many years ago. Yeah. When did that start? When did the live events till now? How many years has that been? I mean, you, it's it's a well, six, This is the sixteenth year, but like I started Portal to Ascension, I started the Facebook group in two thousand six. Okay, two thousand twelve, Mind Consciousness and Evolution was the name of the Facebook group. The name kept changing, and then from two thousand six to two thousand eight, it changed like four five times. And um, then eventually, I, you know, from like a dream that I had, I shifted it in summer of 2008, same month that the stock market crashed um, because I was working as a financial analyst. So I got fired as a financial analyst. And um, so in, in summer 2008 was a milestone moment for me where I shifted it to two portals of ascension. And then one month after that is when I created the first event. So summer 2008 was the first one that we did. It was live events for a long time, up until 2016, mm -hmm. almost all live events. I did a few webinars where people that, there was another platform that was way ahead of their time. I mean, they were creating webinars, doing this stuff before anybody was doing this, like on this level conferences. And I was doing, I was bringing on speakers with them and doing it. And then they weren't generating enough income to sustain themselves. So like around 2000, um, 13, 14, they stopped doing it, right? So I had a few events I did with them. And then um, 2016 hit. And I was like, hey, this is just too much work. Live events, okay, you got to travel, you need hotels, you need to market to the local community, you don't know anybody there, you need to, you need to sell yourself, if you will, but also not be selling yourself in order to communicate with the local community to have them on board to want to even share your event, right? And because I was going to small little towns to big cities as well. And so that's why I feel like I'm a good producer because I really had to do that on a level where I was like so much about the mission and the passion that that's the reason why people jumped on board. And then 2016, I was like, hey, I can't afford this anymore. I'm not, like I didn't generate any, I was not surviving of this, you know? Right. My parents would give me extra money here and there to help me with the business that mm -hmm. because my mom really wanted me to succeed. And um, I would work like part time jobs or I'd work other full time jobs. And then a couple months later, as soon as I had some pr prospect for a consciousness event, I would just quit. And then I would be like, oh, shit, I'm yeah. out of money again. <laughs> you know, nice. so 2016, I went online and that's when it shifted and it became more full time. Well, it also opened up the globe when you did that too. And, and I mean, you know, the online events, that was just the way it was. Uh, I mean, the in-person events, that's just the way that it was done. But even still back then, you were still a renegade having mm -hmm. in-person events of this type and of this sort. And some of your favorite people that you admire and like that you've had on your channel, like William Henry, Billy Carson. Um, who is the gentleman we both like, this, the symbols guy? He's now passed. What's his name? What it says? What is he again? Uh, the one who does the symbols, the esoteric symbols, and he just recently passed this past year. Mm. Um, 
I'm trying to think of his name. Yeah, oh, I can't think of his name. He's on Gaia TV. I I love that guy. I love everything. He's I'm not sure. He's one of your famous people you like, and I like as well. And I know you like Dolores Cannon, and so do I. But these are this is the level that you came out of the gate. And I, I from what I've heard you tell me in the past, it was because of your your passion to like seek the truth and to know and to question and mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, you, you, one thing I like about you is that you don't put the fear there. You're like, Hey, let's just see, let's just, Hey, let's see, see where it goes. You know, let's follow this rabbit hole. And you have been inclusive with that journey. You're like, this is my journey and come along if you want to, if you want to, yeah. you know, play in this galactic sandbox, come along and you have made it where you're building a bigger and bigger community. And I think you're helping the other, if you want to call them, star seeds, light workers to, to um, speak their voice, speak their truth, come out more because of what you've done. And now you've made this venture from having this from online and just quality. You have the YouTube portal to Ascension channel, which is also very good. And now you have the Galactic Origins Cruise, which I'm super excited because Mm -hmm. I know it's going to do great. And let me tell you why, uh, why it's going to do great because you're doing it. And I said, Hey, it's going to do great. So of course it's going to, no, I do that. I said, it's going to do great. Things do great. (laughs) But the reason why is that you're mixing in, uh, instead of it, uh, you're mixing in vacation, fun, and laughter with yeah. having a seminar at sea. And so you have all the food there. You have all the niceties. You have your room. You have everything there. It's probably easier to keep up with people than doing head counts because they're kind of all right there. Mm-hmm. And everybody is is where they can, can there. It's they can connect. Mm-hmm. And so I think this is going to be. Um, like special kind of, you know, you're going to get all the quality of the seminars that you produce. And I'm super excited about speaking and being part of this. Uh, but you're also going to have the intimacy of meeting these people that are there. Yeah. Right? It's, you're, it's like you're going on vacation with these luminaries. You know, <laughs> you yourself are a luminary and we're all in this. We're all basically at this phase in 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 our timeline where we're all learning and remembering so that we are the people that are into this right now are going to literally be the teachers of the new paradigm because you might think that you're everybody's awake because you're hanging out with all these awake people but a good 75 percent plus of the world are not aware you know and there's a time that's going to be happening right now you know that um we're going basically we're in the phase where we're receiving all this awareness we're activating ourselves in order to be the way showers so this is another event it's a transformational event it's a retreat um and when i say transformational it's like you know how you go to like a breathwork retreat or you go to a yoga retreat and you go through certain specific experiences in order to really empower yourself and to release things we're going to be having that embedded in the whole experience so it's like a retreat a tour a vacation and you get to like have a vacation with a lot of these people that um, are doing some pioneering work on the planet. Some of the most amazing people that are doing this. So you get to connect with them, have experiences with them and to learn from them. And then we get to go on excursions to ancient sites as we're traveling and activate. So this is, this is really hitting every checkbox in what I would ever want to do an event. That's why it's so cool because it's like all types of events that I ever do in one. And even having, for example, we have music. It's like a, it's like a music festival also embedded in this, right? And then the cruise liner obviously has all this entertainment. So it's just, to me, I'm just really excited for it. And it's also, I feel like a milestone in what, what I'm creating at Portal to Ascension. It's the next level. It's the next level. And that's what I got uh, earlier when I, you know, interviewed with uh, Susan Shumsky, who's your co-host or your mm-hmm. co-partner in this venture. Uh, from divine travels and i said i really feel like this is uh, some next level thing that it's actually this this i don't know why but this feels it's big and i think part of it what i got intuitively is because you know we're away from the cities we're away from our regular routine number one but we're away from the cities we're in the water we're like free we're like freestyling you know we're in the middle of freaking ocean and so because of that there is a um energetically when you're surrounded by that much body of water energy of course you know uh you know 
you know, the water, a sacred geometry, the whole energy thing with water. But the fact that we're away from the land in the water and away from cities and stuff, and we're going to be doing energy work. And a lot of these people that, including yourself, just being around people can activate someone. Yeah. Because they're at that level. I mean, the presence alone can activate people. So uh, I want to actually get into the trip and show people uh, some of the speakers. I want to talk about the places that we're going to go. Let's talk, uh, um, as you're putting that up, I'd love to just talk about the theme because you mentioned before we came on, you know, why we're creating the Galactic Origins Cruise. Oh, yes. You you can have it in the title, Demystifying a Star Lineage, right? So love to give some context to that. Yeah. At the beginning of every yeah. single year at Portal to Ascension, um, I just have like a theme that comes to me for the year. I'm, I'm like observing what's been going on and what's relevant now and where we're heading. And obviously over the last couple of years, so much UFO disclosures happened last year, especially was the um, the congressional hearings. There's going to be some more happening. And it's just to me, it's just like we should be, we should really be beyond the fact that are these sightings foreign adversaries? Are there some drones that we aren't aware of? Which is keeps being circulated around the same people that are also saying that we have evidence of this for hundreds of years in our in textbooks. It's like, was China around 200 years ago doing these things and uh, sending drones to our, you know, to our country? No. So it's just it's kind of paradoxical and then we will, it contradicts each other, what is being saying on the mainstream and what they truly know. So there's something that isn't being spoken about. There's so much fragmentation when it comes to, let's just say the elite, the corruption, the politicians yeah. in regards to agendas, a fundamental Christian agenda. These are demons. Even within that, it's split, you know, yeah. people that are um, maybe corrupt politicians taking money from lobbyists from petrol industries, but, they have no idea about the ET thing. And now the ego is being hurt. And they're like, wait a second, I had top clearance. You telling me I don't have top clearance? And then people saying, um, oh yeah, well, this guy's corrupt anyway, so what he's saying is a lie. But because of that element of corruption, we're not realizing that a lot of people actually do not know about this. And there's this war behind the scenes that has so many different agendas on disclosing the information, people that do and people that don't. That's the mainstream element. So the reason why I'm taking it to Galactic Origins is because I really want to like zero in into the conversation. We know who these a lot of these beings are. They're interacting with us. They're landing in specific places in the world. People are communicating with them. We're receiving the messages. And first contact is everyone becoming a channel for this information. So this cruise, like this whole year, I have a a Palladian conference, a Lyran conference, a Syrian, uh, not Syrian, but Orion conference next year. And it's just to really speak about that energy. So the reason why we're doing the Galactic Origins Cruise, it's not all ET stuff, of course. Like we have transformational workshops, we have ancient history, we have consciousness, but the theme is there in order to maybe even using the water, the ocean, like permeating that frequency and the energy around the planet for us to move the conversation mm-hmm. from you know, nuts and bolts to the galactic origins and our spiritual connection and how it even connects to the the science of quantum physics, vibration and frequency, why we don't see these beings and the world that we're going to move into. So, you know, that's the overall arching theme. And we're going to be creating, a, um, not only doing presentations there, we're going to be interviewing the speakers. We're going to create a documentary from it. So everything that we're going to be doing on the cruise is maximizing, awesome. you know, maximizing everything, even the documentary from the ancient sites, so that after the cruise, for years to come, whatever we do on that cruise ship will be permeating into, into our world, into our society. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I have a gut feeling that there's going to be several people wanting to pick up that documentary. I, there is something very magical that's going to happen with this. I mean, my intention, I mean, you know, uh, I'm completely open. My, my, I would just be thrilled. Like if I could say, what is it that I would like? I would like to do some CE5, send some, some love to the star family. You know, here we go. Sky up through the water. We have these ships and we're like, let's get on there. We go there. We're, we learn all these, these things. We come back like no time has lapsed at all. And we're ready 
to be able to be the teachers of the new world for this disclosure. Of course, we're already ready, but it would be nice to get jacked up uh, with our, you know, DNA and to be with our star family to really just be on even more on fire. But uh, I'm, I'm open to that because there are several people that are on the ship that I've had contact, that have seen UFOs, including myself, and and also have contact with these beings that I consider very high vibration. Mm-hmm. And But then you have this world. I mean, look, you brought up some good points. We're at a time, let's really look, you know, I'm, I, I believe in being practical, but there's always a solution. Of course, the solution is law of always. But right now we're at a time that, people are confused or a little lost. And then when you, they mention UFOs, they, you know, I'm in the Bible, but they assume they're all demons. You know how many conversations I've had that <laughs> God created all beings <laughs> that, you know, some look like us, some don't, you know, I mean, this don't judge There's good humans, bad humans, you know, let's, let's, let's leave that open. So we, uh, we, we are still kind of, we're the forerunners. So it's a little bit muddy sometimes helping, Yeah, I understand. You understand. But trying to help others understand it's okay. Let's move forward. This is the time and the place for us to do that because there are forces that are trying to uh, stop our ascension. And uh, it's not going to happen. Not this time, baby. (laughs) I mean, in the past it's happened. But I think that this is why it's so important that all like-minded light workers, star seeds, healers, uh, come together in love. And, you know, I think we're going to have something on the deck one day where we're all in prayer, meditation, mm-hmm. helping this planet. Isn't mm-hmm. that correct? Exactly. And we don't have the full schedule done yet. For now, we know that on the winter solstice, which is the last day, we're going to be doing like a, you know, meditation on the deck. But we're there for seven days. So I'm going to see what we can do at other times. Because it's a 2,000 person cruise ship. Okay. We're going to have around 200 people on there, which is like pretty cool. Actually, 10% of the people will be ours. And so we, I got to kind of see where we can do our things, but we have our own dedicated conference venue. We have two rooms dedicated just to us. So, um, yeah, but it would be nice to do multiple things and maybe even a CE5 one, not maybe, but definitely. Yeah. I mean, come on. on So do you have the nighttime goggles with the camera and all that and the, I do not have it, but I'm got a feeling that one person might have it there. I have it. I have one. Um, you know, Craig Campobasso, he told me to get that. And he also said if you look through glass, you can see things. I'm like, well, don't glasses count for that? So, but, uh, it, you know, I, I'm not worried about that. I'm just saying that I feel like that uh, because, you know, the other thing is, so what I got, I got a, you know, I don't know, epiphany, another epiphany today. Uh, about the Galactic Origins cruise is that you have all these people like yourself all around the world. And and you know this is true, some more than others, but a lot of us um, have been working towards uh, esoteric knowledge and truth for a long time. I remember 12 years old being in the library reading some crazy stuff, bigger crazy, bigger crazy, everybody else is out there doing whatever. I've always read, 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 or I'm always doing something. I know you are too. And People like us that will be joining us, some will be speaking, some will be, you know, hanging out with us that are that are joining and registering to be a part of this. Yeah. They're the same way and they need to be re, uh, replenished. They need to be energized. They need to be filled and validated with others like them. And I think we're going to get charged up there because I think it's a love flow that we're, I think we're passing through a special place. You mentioned, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, wait, wait, but we're going to get charged up. I think that it's just a love flow. I agree. And something I've been talking about a while for the last few months is it's pretty much confirmed in my mind that next three years, the world as we know it's not going to be the same including Amen. over 50 percent of the jobs are going to be obsolete okay and this isn't just because of ufos this is also because of ai whether you're whatever you're on right uh, actually my dad is an avid ai researcher he like watches everything and he gives me reports on it and um pretty much like half the degrees that people are in school for now mm-hmm. they're not going to be able to use when they graduate Really? Yeah. Like what area? It's not to freak people out, but I don't care. But, you know, we'll, we'll just readjust. Oh, well, first, the first ones for sure is web design, video editing, and 
coding, coding anything, right? Like even there's this AI um, um, program out now that is just in the beginning phases, but it's epic that you can literally tell it what to create. It'll create the code and then it creates its own self-awareness to correct itself until it makes it perfect without any other kind of uh, necessity for you to input anything on it, right? The web design element, basically around, I would say over 50% of the AI's capability is being held back right now because it will completely collapse the economy. So it's already available, right? Mm. AI has reached its singularity point, basically. And um, so not only that, then also um, um, within three years, they're going to probably start implementing dri uh, self-driving vehicles because the self-driving vehicles are actually safer and getting more and more safer. And... You know, again, it doesn't matter what side that you're you on on this. And then also surgeons, the um, um, doctors and pres prescriptions and surgeries are actually already being done by AI robots and are actually have less of an error margin than humans. Yeah. So if you want to make sure more people survive, obviously to go there, right? So, you know, it's being implemented. It's inevitable. We need to shift our consciousness to match what is happening on the planet plus with the ufos that's coming out and the information coming out and the technology that they have slowly dripping right in the next three years if even if the ufos weren't around and just the technology minus the ai was going at the level it is still there will be a lot of shifts they're yeah. even having conversations behind closed doors on universal basic income globally <clears throat> a global one because the fact that what are people going to be able to do if all these jobs are gone right so um, with that, it's right now to be just caught up in the rat race and then just to be surprised by a new reality all of a sudden probably yeah. isn't the best way to go. A lot of people tuning yeah. and listening already are in the know. So moving into a place where we work on what – start stepping into what we're inspired about, what our purpose is, what we're passionate about is really great. So – you know, I invite everybody on this cruise, and I especially invite the people that are in this world, in this rat race, working in this system, and they want to break free from it, you know, Amen. and or even mm -hmm. teach others how to break free from it. Take this time, break free from it, come and join us, because you already know, we create some of the most epic, safe, beautiful experiences oh, okay. for people, Absolutely. you know, and I create events, you know, I'm on my own healing journey. I create events that I want to go to so I can heal myself. <laughs> hey, what a, you know what? This, this is the way I look at it. Uh, you know, our higher self, uh, the divine, uh, great spirit, whatever you want to call it. I mean, can do all that. You know, we can do all that. We can we can heal ourselves. We can heal others. We can help start healing the planet. But I think you're right. What I see is there's going to be a lot of chaos and we need to bring order and love and understanding. And that means for all people. Uh, and you're right. Things are changing. I can feel it and people can feel it. And I think that as I think the one thing that I feel sure about that as the world change changes and so forth, I can definitely say with myself and with you and many others that we're going to work in a way that is, is bringing love and calmness and mm -hmm. solutions. Not that we have all the solutions, but, um, you know, uh, I, I believe in people. I believe in our family, too. <laughs> but I believe in people. And despite whatever shake, shake up, that's what it is going to be a shake up. And I'm seeing it, too. We got nothing to be fearful of because... The system that we rely on, we think we need to survive. It but sucks. all we need is food, <laughs> water, and shelter. That's all we need. And love. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All of those things will still exist when other systems collapse. Okay? Right. That's true. That's true. But I think that people have gotten their comforts, and this is going to require exactly. more people to go so in. It might be a little discomfort to start out. Yeah, it's going to be dis-ease, discomfort, and this is this is a new way of looking at things. But I also think it's an energy shift, and I think it's also a decision. Uh, one of the, I think it was Bashar that I heard, and I agree with it. It was beautiful. He said that basically that the um, with the uh, the new reality, the new ascension, and others that want to stay in the three D world, that it's like looking through a glass. And seeing it and like, hmm, look at that, which is interesting because Christ told me when things happen, he's told me things, something's going to happen mid-September 
Okay. I think I know what it's, it's probably not good, but the thing is he said, just observe, meaning don't be drawn into this drama, no. this created drama, right. For an effect and just observe and try to be in a calm place. He said, just observe. You don't have to participate in everything and in, including your, uh, be, your comments being a state of neutrality. And so not that you don't care, but, I think that's uh, when he talked yeah. about looking at it. I see that now where it's like, oh, and there just feel like division, but that's okay because um, I, I, this is why we also as star beings need to attend these conferences. This is why you have them. So let's tell everybody where they, I mean, we're still going to talk, uh, but I want to, I want them to know where they can register and yes. be a part of it. Yeah, galacticordinancecruise.com. And so we're basically going to, um, leaving from, from Florida, we're going to Belize, Honduras, and we're stopping in Mexico two different times at two different areas. And we have four excursions during that whole trip. And so you can sign up at galacticordinancecruise.com. And when you sign up and register, just go ahead and write um, on there how you heard about this. So obviously, if you heard about it through this one, put Tamara's name on there. Right. Yay. And, um, there's you know, me. Sign up. Yay. Okay. I do have something at where is it? Okay. So if you do use my name, you get a 30 minute, $325 psychic medium reading from me. I can do a lot of stuff. Okay. Nice. So if you need an activation, I'll give you that. So I, uh, I'm a conscious and trance channel. I don't trance channel a lot in front of people, but <laughs> that's, I look very strange when I do that. But, I do a lot of things, but you will get your 30 minutes and the person you're bringing will get 30 minutes. So mm -hmm. you can't beat that. And that's my way of sharing my love with you and my appreciation. And just want to let everybody know if they do mention me that I will definitely do that. I don't think that I think in life, whatever you give out, you get back. And so I just try to be in a state of gratefulness. I guess we should tell them too about the Lemurian concert. I mean, concert conference coming up July 27th mm -hmm. or 28th. Could you yes. speak a little bit about that too? Yeah. So we are doing the, a two day conference on Lemuria and we reported to Ascension. What I have the opportunity to do is things that I'm really interested in, or I see that other people want to really go deep into. We do some of the deepest dives on these topics. So um, Tamara was a part of our Atlantis two-day conference last year. And so this year we're doing Lemuria, going deep into that, which is really cool because it's going to be full spectrum Lemuria, evidence of archaeological sites from the linear sciences all the way to the deeply esoteric, all the way to people remembering and experiencing things and channeling themselves there. So really full range um, um, two-day conference on Lemuria, and that's the last weekend of July. You can get that. You can sign up for that. Just a portal to ascension.org, upcoming events, and it's on the first page there. Oh, let me see here. Here we go. Uh, still, no, that's not it. Hold on. Well, it's portal to ascension.org. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Boom. There it is. Here Boom. It is. Let me put that back up again. Boom. So you got both. And there you go. And so that's where yeah. you can. Super uh, deep dive. Lumeria. And I, it'll be, you know, it's interesting, Neil, please sign up, sign up for the conference. There is reasonable, go on portal to ascension.org, sign up for this. It's, and you get the replays. It's all your events are fantastic. But one of the things that I noticed, uh, especially Atlantis is that someone would say something, but that someone would take a totally different perspective, but it was somehow it was consistent, but it was different. Yeah. And, and is it always like that? It was kind of like the, the yeah. speakers blend, even though they're very different. Yeah, yeah, it is. that You know, after years of doing this stuff, I started realizing how intuitively the schedule comes together. And then everything just like is just the perfect lead up to the next person. It's like an opening for the next experience. Even the days that, you know, I might go back and forth for ages on the calendar day. I might add more events and shift the calendar day four to five times. And then all of a sudden, I realized that date is something in alignment with maybe the topic, right? And one of the craziest things was last year, we did a two-day pleading conference. And that, what I just outlined, is exactly what happened. Changed the date a few times, didn't know anyone was going to know it, settled on these dates. And the day after the pleading conference was an alignment with Earth with the central star of the Pleiades. 
<laughs> that is perfect. Well, yeah. one of the, there, I mean, I love synchronicity because we know there's no such thing really that is just an alignment. Uh, but I love when that happens. And it's just validating to the work that you do. But seriously, everybody needs to go to this event and tell us real quickly the different little places we're going to go. We're going to go to the Mayan ruins. And yes. then the, these other places are sacred uh, activation points, right? Yeah. So we're going to Costa Maya, which is in Mexico. That's a place I have not been to before. And, you know, if you go to galacticoriginscruise.com and you go to schedule, you can click on mm -hmm. excursion add-ons. And so the add-ons are excursions are separate. You know, you get the whole cruise and everything for the attendance price. And um, so Costa Maya is the first one. Alton Ha, which is in Belize, which I've been to, really beautiful place. And then we're going to Garifuna, which is in Honduras. And in Costa Maya, we're going to have a, a fire ceremony there. In Garifuna, we're going to be able to listen to some local indigenous um, music from the indigenous people there. And then in Tulum, one of my favorite archaeological sites, I love Alton Ha as well, but Tulum is just like, oh my God, because it's overlooking the ocean. It's got this beach connected to it, a whole experience there. I've been to that one many times. And I, I often joke whenever I go to that one that I probably lived in central Mexico and asked for a job transfer when I was a Mayan to, to the coast. And actually Tulum is interesting because that's that's where there's an island called Cozumel off the coast, which is where we're going to stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. We stop at Cozumel and we take a boat straight to the ruins uh, into Tulum. Cozumel is where the conquistadors first landed and, and they were looking at, they were on Cozumel looking at the coast of Tulum, looking at the pyramids and the Mayans were looking back at them. And basically this is the first time they ever saw each other. And then the conquistadors were like, oh, maybe we shouldn't go yet. And they left. <laughs> and then they came back later with, you know, with a whole bunch of people and, and landed back in Tulum. So a lot of history there. Oh, wow. That's cool. And they got to see also, isn't it where you have like sundials? So they had technologies that they use yeah. that, that the conquistadors weren't really aware of till they saw that, uh, which you know, could be alien technology. So uh, I do know that some, I know you mentioned Cozumel, but some of these ruins, I think it was one of the Mayan ruins. I know someone who visited there, Robert mm -hmm. Bear, who's a near-death experiencer, multiple one. And he went there and he came back with, and, and it didn't last but a couple of days, but it, on his hand, it was a red triangle. Wow. Like it was some alien contact. Yeah. And do you know, yeah. And do you know that uh, at a conference, UFO conference, Ray Hernandez, he said this publicly, but on my channel and he said that he got, he said, well, they're here, you know, he goes, okay, well, great. I got to go to sleep. I hope they don't bother me. He woke up with the same red triangle. Wow. Is that cool? I yeah, mean, it's kind of like going to the club, like, bam, look who was, I was here. Yeah. I mean, that is, that's amazing. But uh, as far as activation, that can also bring people into their memory, their recall, into their power. Um, I would also say because of these sites being visited by our star family, who's to say they are still not being visited by star family? What yeah. do you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and no, So Mexico has some of the most UFO sightings in the world. And we're going to be flying over the – we're going to be cruising through the Bermuda Triangle on the first day. And then – we're going to go to these sites where there's a lot of actual um, people that have said sightings of it. And when I was living in that area in Tulum, I was living in that area last year, there was actually a, um, a UFO video on, on top of one of those sites as well. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, when you shift your consciousness and vibration and you're there anyway, you can get to that level. So with oh, our yeah. group, that experience, I've had the most, it's actually really cool because I've always wanted to do a tour to the mine sites. And, um, so, but I never thought of doing it in a cruise. So this is another thing, which is really cool because I get to do my Mayan tour on the cruise ship, in the comfort of the cruise ship, at some of the sites that have had the most impact on me out of the whole world, have been everywhere, even Egypt. And it's oh, because yeah. I have such a deep connection to that area. So not, I'm actually not gonna be one of the guides, but I'm very well versed in all those ancient sites. Cause I did my own research there. So you guys get really an opportunity to be with some people that are really dedicated their lives to researching that area. JJ and Desiree Hurtak, JJ mm -hmm. had an apparition. He has an image of himself where this light came into his head at the Tulum site, like around 20, 30 years ago. And he has a deep connection. He's going to be leading the excursion. 
Mm. What? Now, wait a minute. Something, a beam of light went to his head or a being, yeah. a being. A beam, a beam of light. A beam. Came yeah, so. I want he, one. Yeah, That's he cool. did. The same thing happened to him in Egypt at the king's chamber. That's how he, when Enoch came into him, that's how he wrote the book, Keys of Enoch. It was a channeled book when Enoch came into him in the king's chamber. A similar experience happened to him. Oh, him. Really? That is so, mm -hmm. I did not know that. Well, when I saw a couple years ago, a fleet of UFOs with Clay, and he goes, look at that. It was a fleet by the car. I mean, they were right there. I, and then he goes, but look at that one. There was a big one by me. I, I just felt so much love and and i was so excited and i was like a little kid i was so happy and i think they know where your heart is and if you're okay with it <laughs> and i think they they don't want to make us feel uncomfortable but if our vibe is high they're like okay mm -hmm. i think they're ready for that well look uh let's you know i do want to talk more we're going to be talking more about this as we get closer but uh everybody please sign up and register for the Galactic Origins Cruise. And not to mention, mention my name, you know, Tamara Richardson. I got it totally covered up right now. But mention my name and you will get the 30-minute free reading as well as uh, being on board with all of us. We're going to have a blast and we're going to have fun. I and mean, it's not going to be all seminar at sea. We're going to have some giggles. It'll be great. And you get to be with your tribe. So we're going to have fun. It's a unique opportunity that you want to go ahead and book and get your room because these rooms are going to sell out. So you want to get in there and then make sure you get the space that you want. Mm -hmm. Any last words, Neil, that you're the captain of the no, ship. Just really just um, grateful to be able to do this work and to continue moving forward with this. You know, it's, it's a challenging time for many people. Some people might be having a good time at it. For me, it's really been challenging over the last year. And even for me, it's really hard to move forward sometimes, you know, doing this stuff and, being reliant 100% on yourself and what you create as well. It's um, in this world where we need to literally like do all these things and produce and be pr productive just so we can survive. You know, the system has been created in order to disempower us and to make us kind of defeated in many levels. So I'm just um, trusting, trusting that we're moving forward and that we, we can create a new world, you know, and that's why we're doing these events. Well, it's just the truth. That's the way it is. And, you know, there's a lot of people, light workers, that do get a little bummed out because they see that we're still in the thick of it. We're still in the fight. We haven't crossed that little hump yet. But mm -hmm. uh, we have to keep moving forward. And I think that that's what drives me. You know what I mean? I feel a sense of being to driven to go on. So I, to be that voice. But I tell you what, you just amaze me. All the things that you do. And you. uh, you're such an inspiration. I think you've turned so many people on to their to their mission uh, by seeing you. So um, don't ever don't ever forget that. I mean, you are a you're a powerhouse, Neil. <laughs> you are. I mean, um, it's a lot. I see stuff you do in the world. You know, in the world, same as you. I see all this craziness. I see stuff. I even get in information, but I don't let that hold me back. If anything, I let it drive me because mm -hmm. I really want us to, I really want love to win. I want humanity yeah. to thrive. Well, look, everybody register and we will see you on the cruise. You've got the information. There you go. Much love, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Please subscribe, like, and make comments, and support this channel by becoming a member. Thank you for your continued support.